I love how honest and bold Paul is on the reality of the resurrection. For him, the resurrection is the linchpin of the gospel. If archaeologists were to discover the body of Jesus in a Palestinian grave and somehow DNA proof it or whatever, it was Jesus of Nazareth, our entire faith would crumble. Yeah, the moral system would stand, the philosophical, you need a way to discipline your desires, whether it's Buddhism or the way of Jesus or Aristotle, virtue ethics or whatever. There are pieces that for sure are great, but our faith, our experience of the living God in love with one another, all of that would fall apart. Paul is just straight up. One, if there's no resurrection, the gospel is a myth, verse 13. Two, preaching the gospel is, quote, useless, verse 14. Three, Paul and the apostles are, quote, false witnesses or liars, verse 15. Four, our faith in the gospel is futile. It is waste, verse 17. Five, we are still in our sins, meaning we are all alone. No one is coming to save us. It's on you. Find the right killer app or mindfulness technique, or pill, or wellness tip, or tech, and just face it, there is no cure for the disease. Make your peace with the black abyss. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Six, those who have fallen asleep are lost, verse 18, meaning our loved ones are gone forever, and when we die, which could be in decades or could be in minutes, it's fade to black. There is no hope beyond the horizon of this life of pain and suffering. And seven, quote, we are of all people most to be pitied, verse 19, because we could all be eating brunch right now (laughs) if there is no resurrection. Some of you are at home and you're like, I am eating brunch right now. (laughs) God sees you. That's all I have to say. But we don't, so no shame from us. If there is no resurrection, but, verse 20, take a look, Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep or died. Now, first fruits is an agrarian metaphor. Most of us in the room, I'm guessing, are not farmers, unless if some of you are from Savi Island or way out in the boondocks. Most of us are not. But it's an agrarian metaphor that's lost on us urbanites from spring. Right now, there are first fruits. We get this all over the city, like the cherry blossom trees. Anybody going to run downtown this week or whatever? If not, I was there a few days ago. Just gorgeous. I went for a walk yesterday in Forest Park. There are buds all over the forest. And they are signs of what is coming for the rest of the forest. Summer and new growth and new life. And if you're a farmer, a harvest. Christ's resurrection is the first fruits, meaning it's the first bud on the tree, it's the first blade of grass out of the ground in spring. It's a sign of what is coming for all of humanity. There is a lot more to come. You see, Easter isn't just about Christ's resurrection, it is about ours. Keep in mind that a lot of American Christians think of the future as a two-step process, life followed by life after death with Jesus in a place he called the heavens or the God space, some kind of place where we are held in the love of God. But in the scriptures, the future for followers of Jesus is a three-step process, life followed by life after death, followed by resurrection, or what N.T. Wright calls life after life after death. Here, on earth, new whole and free forever with God. The idea is very simple. One day in the future, what happened to Jesus will happen to all of his followers. Life, death, burial, resurrection.